Hello everyone. Today we are going to make influence line diagrams in a cantilever beam. We know that in a cantilever beam, one side will be fixed and the other side will be free. Let us apply a unit load 1 at a distance of A from the free end. Now let us calculate the shear force in the point A. The shear force in the point A will be equal to 1. It will be constant and will not change with respect to distance. You can see that for the whole length of the beam, it is constant and is equal to 1. Now let us calculate the bending moment in the point A, that is MA. In this beam, we are having only one load, that is the unit load 1. To calculate the moment in the point A, we have to multiply the load into distance. In this case, we are moving towards left hand side, clockwise will be negative, anti-clockwise will be positive. The unit load is acting in the clockwise direction towards the point A, so it will be negative. For the distance, we have to take this distance. This distance is L minus A. So MA is equal to minus 1 into L minus A. When A is equal to 0, MA will be minus L. When A is equal to L, MA will be 0. Using that, we can make this diagram. When A is equal to 0, it will be minus L. When A is equal to L, it will be 0. Now, let us take a point C at a distance of X from V. First, we are going to draw the ILD for the shear force at C. When A is less than X, the shear force at C will be 1. You can see that when this load moves from the point B to the point C, the shear force in the point C will be always 1. Suppose the unit load is just left of C, on the right side there is no load, so the shear force at C will be 0. Using these two values, we can draw this diagram. Now let us draw the ILD for MC. To find the movement at C, we can use the left hand side rule, clockwise positive and anticlockwise negative. The unit load is acting in the clockwise direction, so it will be negative. For this load, we have to take this distance. This distance is x minus a. In the point B, a will be 0. So, for the movement at C, we will get minus x. In the point at C, A will be x. So, in this for A, we can apply x so that the movement at C will be 0. When the unit load is just to left of C, you can see that in the portion CB, there is no load. So, when the unit load moves from C to A, the movement at C will be 0. Using this data, we can draw this diagram. Now, we are going to end this session. Thank you for watching this video.